What if I told you that a creature long believes to be gone forever, a beast of fang and fury, whose thunderous footsteps once echoed across Ice Age America, has returned. Yes, returned. Not in fantasy, not in myth, but in reality. You may have seen them in Game of Thrones, those massive wolves that protected the Stark children, looming in size and power. But what if I told you they were inspired by something real? Meet the Direwolf, Enochian Dyrus, an apex predator from the Pleistocene Epoch. Feared by all, matched by none. And now, thanks to the wonders of science, it's back. But as this ancient titan rises from the ashes of extinction, a new question emerges. Can the dire wolf reclaim its throne? Or has the grey wolf already inherited the crown of the wild? Before we journey into this epic tale, make sure to subscribe to Smart Nature and ring the bell icon so you never miss a wild story like this again. Long before humans built cities, before books were written or fires tamed, the dire wolf ruled. Roaming from Alaska to South America, these giants stood at 3.5 feet tall and weighed a powerful 68 kilograms. Their jaws were built for destruction, bone-crushing, tendon-tearing weapons that could rip through mammoths, bison, and even horses. The dire wolf didn't hunt, it dominated. But around 9,000 years ago, something changed. The Ice Age ended, ecosystems shifted, prey disappeared. And just like that, the dire wolf vanished, its bones buried beneath millennia of earth and time. For thousands of years, all we had were fossils, until now. In a lab deep within the United States, a team of scientists, geneticists, and dreamers unlocked something no one thought possible. Through a process known as de-extinction, they extracted DNA from fossilized remains and began rewriting history, combining the ancient code of the dire wolf with modern relatives like the grey wolf. And after years of trial, error, and sleepless nights, the impossible happened. The dire wolf walked again. But this wasn't a clone. It was rebirth. A creature forged by time and science, strength and legacy. Yet, as this new old predator opened its eyes, it didn't see mammoths or endless plains. It saw our world. Roads, skyscrapers, new rivals, new rules. Now imagine this. The cold wind sweeps across a forest clearing. On one side stands the resurrected dire wolf, 68 kilograms of muscle, menace, and prehistoric power. On the other side, a sleek, calculating predator. Lighter, faster, but no less dangerous. The grey wolf, standing about three feet tall and weighing 41 kilograms. One is a relic of the past, the other a master of the present. The dire wolf has brute strength. Its jaws can crack bones. Its body can take hits that would cripple other animals. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, this creature is a wrecking ball of fur and fury. But the grey wolf is no fool. What it lacks in weight, it makes up for in intelligence, coordination, and speed. Grey wolves are social strategists, hunting in packs with military precision, communicating with signals only they understand. A lone dire wolf versus a pack of grey wolves? The odds begin to shift. But if the dire wolf isn't alone, if they too began to form packs like their ancient kind did, the balance of power could change once more. The dire wolf was a different kind of predator. Less agile, yes, but its sheer power could overwhelm. Unlike the modern wolf, which often wears down its prey, the dire wolf went for the throat. Quick, ruthless, direct. Its hunting style resembled a lion more than a wolf. Short bursts of explosive violence. And while evidence suggests that they hunted in groups, their social bonds weren't as tight-knit as modern wolves. That might have been their downfall. 
When the Ice Age ended and prey grew scarce, teamwork meant survival. The Grey Wolf adapted. The Dire Wolf didn't. But now, in a world where humans manage habitats and science controls fate, that difference might not matter anymore. Could the Dire Wolf carve out a new place? Could it rival the Grey Wolf once again? But not everyone agrees with this resurrection story. Scientists like Dr. Nick Rollins and Philip Seddon argue that these so-called dire wolves are not true rivals, but genetically modified grey wolves. They point out that the original dire wolf DNA is too degraded to clone, and genetically, dire wolves are more distant from grey wolves than we once believed separated by nearly six million years of evolution. So, while science may have created something close, it may never truly bring back what once was. This isn't just a story about two wolves. It's about science versus nature, past versus future, instinct versus adaptation. The resurrection of the dire wolf opens doors to questions we're only beginning to ask. Should we bring back extinct species? Can they find a home in today's world? And what happens when they meet the creatures that replace them? The grey wolf has proven itself over thousands of years. Intelligent, loyal, adaptable. From the snowy tundra to temperate forests, it has survived every challenge nature threw its way. But now, with the dire wolf's return, the wild has a new contender, or rather, an old one. If these two titans ever met, it would be a scene straight out of legend. The dire wolf, 68 kilograms of ice age muscle, charging through the trees. The gray wolf, leaner, faster, circling, calculating. One fights with force, the other with finesse. But in the end, one emerges victorious. The dire wolf, with its raw strength and revived instincts, rises once again as the apex predator. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, no modern wolf can match its bite, its bulk, or its sheer will to dominate. The king has returned. This is not just a battle between two animals. It's a battle between epochs. And while the grey wolf reigns in our world, the dire wolf whispers to us from the past, reminding us that nature never forgets. Thanks for watching Smart Nature. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon, because next time we're going even deeper into the wild. Until then, stay curious and stay wild.